couple months later, right, picked up my first murder case in prison. You picked up your first murder case in prison. Yes. Same way, me and a guy got in a fight. Right. Man, I I, I box show in West Dallas at the boys' club. Yeah. So I know how to fight. It's a different fighting out here and fighting prison style. Right. That motherfucker dirty in the sun, bitch. They don't square off like no gentleman. They ain't how they fight. They catch you with your back turned, side turned. They don't give a damn. about ain't no rules. Yeah. No rules. So me and him got in a fight. I hurled his ass out. And he, and he mumbled. Yeah, I bet you I kill your ass before the day is over with. That's good as I need. I took that and egg. He went at him. Yeah, I beat him to death with that fucking egg. Damn. When I got in that evening, I went, took a shower, went to the cell. One of the inmate guards came up and got me and said, they want you at the major's office. I went down there to the major's office, or the field major's name is Red Ryder. He's sitting in the office, he said, uh, you know that boy died. He said, uh, get over to that typewriter and type some shit up. All you do is file them old bogus ass lawsuits telling all kind of damn lies on us anyway. Yeah, yeah. He said, now tell a lie that gonna save your ass. He said, get over to that typewriter and type some shit up. So they wrote on my record, that I lost one year's good time, sent us to 15 days in solitary, and a whole lot of other restrictions. Then nothing happened to me. I went on back to the cell, got in bed, and went to sleep. They didn't give a damn about no inmates. They did not care. Yeah. Damn. So so as soon as he said, I bet I bet I'll kill you by the day, you just yeah. right Say, there. You had to take them motherfuckers at their word. We got a warden who, who was wildcat. It's a free for all. He loved violence. Yeah. So I don't know if this motherfucker going to take good on his threat or not. I'm not going to spend every... We work with machetes, axes. Oh, yeah, you already talked about how easy yeah, it was yeah, to get the other the weapons yeah, and stuff It's too like easy that. to get a weapon. I'm not going to walk around there. I can't watch this motherfucker 24-7. So you knew you had, to, you had to right then and yeah. there, you knew you had to kill him. Yeah. That was my first one. I picked my second one up in 84 at the retrieve unit, which later on was named the Wayne Scott unit. Uh... The inmate, uh, me and him had had some words about some wine. He bought some wine for me, which it wasn't homemade wine, it was Everclear. I didn't pay this guard to bring in Everclear. You said, well, you said Everclear? Yeah. Oh, man. I just mixed it up with orange juice. Yeah. And they thought I was making wine. He thought it was homebrew. And he came back to me, he dropped it because he was so damn drunk. Came back to me and said, uh, hey, man, you got to pay for my, you got to refund that. Bullshit, you could ask me a little bit better. I know you drunk as hell. You do business with me all the time. Hey, we could have worked this out. You don't come to me demanding a motherfucking thing. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, uh, uh, I was in the shower one night. I was working in the night laundry. That son of came in the shower with a sword. Came in the shower, I was buck naked. I ain't got nothing but a shower cloth and a soap dish and some flip flops on. Right. He came in the shower with a, with a fucking sword about that long in a towel. He walked up to me, he said, uh, I want to tell you one thing, I ain't scared of your ass. Yeah. He said, I just stabbed a nigga over on Derek. I'm standing there looking. I'm trying to get close to him. The blade is so long. And I'm, man, I'm so young at the time. I'm athletic as hell. He ain't going to get to stab me if I get close up on him. I'm going to throw his ass. I'm going to flip his ass in the shower. So all he did was talk. But it was a guard little young black guard standing right at the door looking at the whole damn thing yeah and uh and he just talked and walked away i went ahead and got dressed the guard asked me say hey man you want me to call that motherfucker back down here where you can get him i said say man you young you got a family let me take care of this i already got life i don't need no follow partners yeah so that happened on the wednesday i was up for my first parole on this live sentence so that happened on a Wednesday, that Friday night, I killed this funk ass. I caught him sitting up there watching TV and killed his ass with a steel dustpan. Wait, you killed somebody with a steel dustpan? Yeah. Hold on, I mean, do you mind talking about it? Like, can we talk about it? No, nah, he was uh, already, that morning before I went to work, I already had packed my shit up, ready to go. So I work in the night laundry. Yeah, right. uh, the Rockets had just got a larger one. They just get, went off, the Houston Rockets. Oh, the Houston Rockets. Yeah, and the news came on. He's sitting up there watching TV. It was some Hispanic inmates sitting right behind him. Yeah. So I come up. 
Well, you didn't even you, you didn't even care about if they was gonna ride with them or not or nothing. I, I would have aired all the ass out. I don't care nothing about that shit. I come up, and touch one on the shoulder. I say, y'all got five seconds to get out the motherfucking way. He tell the other one in Spanish. They start moving off real slow. Left his dumb ass sitting, kicked back on the bench like this, looking at the news. I come up behind him with that steel dustpan. It was a wrap. He hit him. You just hit him one time. Hell no. I hit him six times. Whole chunk of his skull was coming out. Yeah. No. My intention was to kill his ass. The gangs had just started. This was a small prison, only housed 700 inmates. 500 of them got life. If so many people were getting killed, that was a goddamn shame at this little ass prison. Yeah. So you didn't give no motherfucker no chance. The Texas prison had stopped fighting. They had went to stab it. Wasn't no more fist fight. So you got in a conflict with a guy, you better have a weapon because he damn sure going and get a weapon or he already got one. Yeah. So you ain't got that many options. So so it wasn't, so you know, a, a lot of people do think like, you know, it, it was a hit span that brought the little shanks and stuff like that. It wasn't them. That's just what it turned to. That's what then. it turned to. And, and everybody. Yeah, it got rid of the inmate guards. And I ain't gonna lie, I can see why white and his Hispanic inmates formed the game. Right. I was at East Ham when they got rid of the inmate guards there. It was a free for all at that motherfucker. Inmates getting raped, robbed, thrown off the third tier. It was yeah. so much violence there, it was a damn shame. The guy was used to the inmate guards keeping everything. They had control violence. When they got rid of them, it was a free for all for everybody. So I can understand why the gang started. Motherfucker was scared. Ain't nothing in some of them gang but a whole bunch of fucking cowards. It's just, I call them protection rackets. You take one of their gang members and match him up man for man, right. he ain't shit. Yeah. They ain't sh you get into it, one of them. I remember I got into it with a little Hispanic inmate playing chess. I slapped his motherfucking ass playing chess. This little bitch go get his homeboy. What you getting your homeboy for, punk? I slapped you. Yeah. So they come up with the remedy. So the black dudes out of Dallas say, y'all ain't fucking with school. That's bullshit. Say, him and your homeboy can catch the square with school. He don't want none of that. But I had my, my leather gloves with the steel in them. He ain't want none of that. Yeah. So they end up disciplining his ass because he won't fight one on one. Hey, them dudes ain't nothing but fucking cowards, man. Now, they dangerous. You can't underestimate they motherfucking ass. They will kill your ass. Right. But man to man, they ain't shit. That's why on my channel, I never glorify them. I ain't but one gang member I ever talk about was a guy named Charlie Fulbright, one of the founders of the Met Black Prison Gang, Mandigo Warriors. But he did all that killing and shit while there was inmate guards here. And he wasn't no gang member. He was just a dude who ain't gonna take no shit. Right. But uh, the modern dudes, I don't ever bring none of them up. I know a whole lot of them. I was there when some of the gangs started. I was right at the prison when it started. I don't ever glorify that bullshit. I always ask the old school, why you didn't raise hell, why you wasn't a gangster when they had them inmate guards here. That's when we needed all the gangsters we could get. You wasn't no gangster. You was a coward son of a bitch then. Yeah. And now you was a hell of a goddamn gangster with a big old funk ass gang tattoo on your ass. Yeah. And then another thing, you look out here. I don't know of a damn thing no gang members run. What business they on? What apartment come? Look at all these nice ass apartment complex. Do they own any of this shit? Do they own any of them businesses up on Ross Avenue? What do they own? They don't do shit. Right. Got a little trap set in a little weed, set in a little crack, or uh, some little uh, ice or some, some meth. They ain't raising no hell. They ain't having no money. Look at how many buddies they still got in prison who they don't even help. These guys done made a vow to die with you in prison. You know he's serving life. You ain't write him a fucking letter. There's so many so-called gang members. They don't make commissary. They doing bad as hell. Right, big facts. So I don't see no use in the bullshit. I don't see no use in it. You know, all the guys I talk about still on their own two feet the same way as I did. Right. I ain't had no... Now, I had some guys out of Dallas who I know. Now, we'll back each other up. A whole lot of them was old ass booty bandits. You had your booty bandit had to know how to fight. You was booty bandit, you know how to fight. Right. Because you had to. You had to. Motherfucker gonna come at you with a shank, gonna beat for you when you ain't looking, gonna catch you in the shower when you got soap in your head. You got to come out from all that shit and still win. You know, I, I know quite a few of them. And I know some dudes out of Dallas who can fight good as a motherfucker. So most time we had a problem and involve a group, all we do is posse up. Right. 
And these niggas gangsters for real. They'll ride up on some gang members. They don't give a damn about no funk ass gang members. Yeah. They don't care nothing about that shit. That, that only impressive to poor guys ain't got no homeboys or nothing. Oh, they're clowning, making pay rent. Right. And all that bullshit. A dude who got any kind of backup, they ain't want to fuck with him. Or you get out there on your own. You know, me myself, I always, once I seen the prison system was changing, I had to change with the times in order to survive. Right, right, right. It, the violent ass wardens was gone. Now they got these modern college educated wards. Man, you wish to go up to one of these new wards and tell him, you finna kill somebody, they finna lock your ass up right on the spot. You can't even say no shit like that. Where back in the day, you could go see Wildcat and say, hey man, me and this dude with gambling, he owe me some money, won't pay. Cat gonna say, uh, you mean you ain't broke his goddamn jaw? Yeah. You ain't did nothing? Why you come telling me? Go down there and knock his motherfucking head off. Then come back and talk to me. They ain't got them kind of wards yeah, no more. Yeah, it didn't change now. Yeah, I had to change in order to make it. So, right. you know, another thing, I stayed in the college program. Right. When I got to prison, I only needed 36 credits to get a bachelor's degree. Okay, so, okay. I only so you, needed 36 you say, yeah, credits. So, so you say you had got into the uh, the college program yes. while you was locked up. Yeah. They, I was, one day I come in from the fields and uh, one of the inmate guards say, hey, they want you at the education department. I get up there, uh, the principal say, hey, I see you was in college on the outside. Right. Or you can get a student loan, Pell Grant and all that here. If you just enrolled in college. TDC was so good back then, they put the money in your trust fund and they pay for your education. You get free money every month. You just go down there, you go, all the guys in the college program, you see them at the desk signing them checks. Right. Go straight to your trust fund. The prison system didn't charge you nothing. They paid for it. So I graduated. Then uh, I had a guy there named Racehorse. He inspired me because he had a PhD. He said, man, go ahead and shoot for your master's, man. So I enrolled in the master's degree program. And I finished that, but I didn't wait till nine years later, I enrolled in a doctorate program. And doctor program. Yeah, I, I, my book is uh, Islam Demystified, right. sold on Amazon Books. I'm the only inmate in the United States got a college tech book published that's used in a major university or college in the United States, is me. Oh man, that's what's up, man. Yeah. yeah that's what's up, man. What made you wanna, um, Educate yourself like that while you was locked up in the prison. But say, system. prison is a bored environment and you got time. Right. You ain't got no excuse. You got time. Now, what you got problem at is doing the research. Some of these libraries is outdated. Now, doing research is hard, but some of them professors will help you out. They'll bring you good research material that you can research, do all your work with. Right. But the wardens back then begged the inmates to go to college. No guys just didn't want to go. And my at Ramsey, at one time I was the only black inmate in the college program. It was me? The only black inmate. The only black inmate in the college program. Wow. They would not enroll in college. Then I had a white guy who I met at Ramsey. He from Dallas. He's a psychiatrist here in Dallas over at Southwestern Medical Center. He teach psychiatry. Right. He earned a PhD. Graduated magna cum laude, University of Houston. Number one student, valedictorian, an inmate. Yeah. Them guys expire. I mean, if they can do it, I can do it. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Yeah, so that's what's up. I, I dedicated myself. Then my mother be pushing me because she got a PhD. So I wanted to keep up with her. Oh, yeah, you said so that's where you came from. Yeah, so I, I got my doctorate. And right, th you know, I went to SEG for that murder in 84. I spent nine years in SEG. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Nine years? Nine years. Okay, <laughs> that's great. So, okay, for the people that don't know, can you explain to them what SEG is? Ad SEG in, in Texas is uh, you in a cell 24-7. Right. You let out by the hour of the shower. We used to have TVs, no TVs now. You go to rec, they used to have group rec. They don't have that no more. You go to recreation by yourself. Uh, you can only spend uh, $60 in commissary. Now, they only talk to you every six months on releasing you out of administrative segregation. Right. And if you confirm gang member, they don't even talk to you. You stuck. You, you, I know you was, in, you was in there by yourself? By myself. I'm about to say, that had to be, like, that was a long time. Nine years. Guess what? I went in front of a jury and was found not guilty. Right. 
for that case. I didn't get no time for it. The jury, an all white jury acquitted me. Mm. I had a guard come in there to testify and white inmates, black and Hispanic inmates. They seen him pull that knife on me. So my lawyer tell the jury, this man got every right to defend himself. He had one of the most violent prisons in Texas. Man pulled a damn knife on him. What you think he's supposed to do? He come back uh, 36 minutes, not guilty. But they still wouldn't release me and they had said, they said my proud disciplinary record, cause I got a history of violence. They kept my ass in there nine fucking years. Man, a history of, like, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, I know you done got older and you're not in the prison system no more. You know, um, before we, before we um, go on, what year was you released? I released in 2017. 2017? Yeah. Yeah, 2000, yeah, 2017. Damn. Yeah. Damn, man. That's, that's crazy. That's tough. So, I know you, you said your disciplinary uh, record, like, it was basically shown like you, you was a violent person and things like that, right? That's correct. Right, so what 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 was because I, I know you say you killed some people and things like that. Were you just fighting every day or were you? Well, you know, after they got rid of the inmate guard, it was open season, and a lot of us Dallas niggas hang together. You know how Dallas niggas all want to be gangster niggas, right? And uh, and I mean, we go down through there every day, every day, every day. You might See, as well get day. ready. You might as well get ready for it. And I feel sorry for you if these dudes dislike you. They dislike you, it's a wrap for you. Yeah. You, I mean, back then, you couldn't talk shit. You had to back it up. Wasn't no nigga talking. Yeah. You had to get out there and prove. And, and go out there and go fight some. That's right. And you couldn't fight no scrub. Some little scary dude who won't fight back. They want you to fight fight one of these gunslingers. Yeah. You know. But prison was violent. After I, I was in SEG, I had time to think and reminisce how I want to go forward. Right, how did you do all them that time in there, man? Like, man, I just type every day, exercise, listen to working out, like Yeah, me. yeah I, I'm 30 pounds on the weight than what I weighed in prison. Yeah. Since I've been out of prison, I ain't got sick, been in the hospital, every damn thing. As soon as you get out, you can start getting sick. No, I got sick, uh, really, yeah, two years ago. Right. And, uh, and this Hispanic guy, shout out to, uh, Mr. Jesse Aguilar, that man helped me out. I was homeless, right. standing downtown Dallas. He was getting cold that night. He called me on the phone. And his brother did 34 years right. in prison. And he called me and said, hey man, where you at? I said, I'm downtown in the West End by McDonald's. He said, I'll be down there to pick you up. And he told me, he said, hey man, I got an extra house you can stay in. And my first night there, I got sick. They had to call the ambulance. I called him on the phone. I said, say, man, call the ambulance, man. I was sick as hell. I guess what happened to all this stress? Damn. You worrying about surviving, you ain't hardly got nowhere to live. Right, you get you fired from all these fucking jobs. That, that's, that's tough, man, being yeah. out here in the real world. Then you're not, like you said, you didn't have no family or nothing like that. And then people I know was dying and things like that, huh? That and I used to think, off. I said, man, I don't even know no fucking body who I can go to their house and sit down and watch a football game. Oh, nobody I know I can do that with. I couldn't find none of my old buddies. These guys ain't on social media or nothing. I couldn't find them. Now I ran to my old buddy, Lion Willie, me and him raised up together. I talk about him a lot in my videos. Yeah. Now I needed Lion Willie then. He owned a home in West Dallas. I could have easily moved in his house, but I couldn't find him. Right. But Mr. Aguilar helped me out. I stayed over a year at one of his houses. He never told me I had to move. He paid electric, the water, the cable. He paid all that himself. Every Monday, he could drive over and give me some money. Every Monday. So I owe that man a whole lot. Yeah. yeah I, I, so I had help. It seemed like every time I reached the bottom and about to give up, something to come something along and happened. lift me back up. Yeah. yeah. That's, what, that's what's up, man. That's what's up.